Welcome to A Century of Cinema. Today I will be exploring my favourite films of 1945. First up is The Lost Weekend, directed by Billy Wilder. Ray Milland stars as Don Burnham. Don is an alcoholic and has been that way for a while. His brother Wick and girlfriend Helen have been doing their best to help him, short of having him committed or put in whatever past for rehab in 1945, but Don is clearly on his way down to rock bottom. The film traces his descent, interspersed with flashbacks of his early days with Helen, as he discusses with his bartender of choice, Nat, the content of the novel he is going to write, titled The Bottle. Ray Milland gives an outstanding performance as Don, and will go on to win the Best Actor Oscar for the role. In fact, the film practically swept the major categories that year, also snagging Best Screenplay, Director and Picture. Milland is the beating heart of this film and each step of Don's descent is brilliantly portrayed, from wily finagling for a drink to hallucinating creatures in the walls in a quite terrifying scene. Wilder does an incredible job with The Lost Weekend. Apparently he was drawn to the subject of alcoholism after working with recovering alcoholic Raymond Chandler on Double Indemnity, and his direction exhibits some genuine understanding and empathy, which is also in show in the screenplay by Wilder and frequent collaborator Charles, collaborator Charles Brackett, based on a novel by Charles R. Jackson. This is not a movie you want to watch often, it's too honest to be actually enjoyed, but it is incredibly well made and an important subject, especially since it was made at a time where such things were rarely addressed, certainly not on screen. And quite frankly, it is a must, must watch for Ray Milland's performance alone. So here's my choice for best actor of 1945. Playing a trick on me, a dirty trick, Nat. Give me one. I'll pay you when I can, only just don't let me die. The Picture of Dorian Gray is based on Oscar Wilde's novel and was written and directed by Albert Lewin. Herd Hatfield plays Dorian Gray, a young man who is considered incredibly handsome. His portrait is being painted by Basil Holwood, Lowell Gilmore, who considers it his best work. The devilish Lord Henry Wooden, George Sanders, arrives and soon corrupts Dorian with his ideas about morality and goodness being a waste of time. He insists that Dorian's true gift is his youth and beauty, which will inevitably fade. Dorian then states that he would give his soul if only the picture could age while he stayed young. Dorian then meets, a, meets and falls for a young singer from the wrong side of the tracks, named Sybil Vane. Angela Lansbury's excellent Oscar-nominated performance. Lord Henry convinces him to test her moral fortitude before he marries her, a test she fails, and Dorian coldly brushes her aside, resulting in her suicide. After this, Dorian notices a more cruel expression has appeared on the painting. He realises that his wish has come true. About twenty years pass, and Dorian has lived a life of cruelty and debauchery, yet no trace of it, or even age, has appeared on his face, while the portrait has become monstrous. Herd Hatfield as Dorian Gray is effective because his face is completely unaffected by his actions. In any other story, that would be considered bad acting, but it is right on the money here. Dorian is not an entire human being, he's just a facade, and Hatfield gives us the embodiment of that, and it works perfectly. Lowell Gilmore's Basil and George Sanders' Lord Henry act as the angel and devil on Dorian's shoulders, with the far more convincing devil of Lord Henry winning out due to his relentless, witty monologues about the folly of goodness. And Sanders, Sanders is magnificent in this. It's like the character was writ written for him. Also excellent is Angela Lansbury as Sybil Vane. She's only in a few scenes, but in every one she is remarkable particularly the scene where Dorian tests her virtue. You watch her heart silently break as she gives in to Dorian. She is one of the absolute highlights of the movie, as is Harry Stradling's Oscar-winning cinematography, whose atmospheric black and white is abruptly in interrupted by the vivid colour depictions of the portrait. Albert Lewin's screenplay changes a few things from the novel, some for cinematic reasons, others for Hayes Code restrictions, yet a lot of Oscar Wilde's signature wit remains intact, particularly by the character of Lord Henry. 
It is coolly and quite heavily narrated by Cedric Hardwick. And while I generally find the device of film narration to be complete, completely unnecessary, I believe, I believe it works very well in this case. So, riding high on the coattails of the great Oscar Wilde, the picture of Dorian Gray is my pick for best screenplay. Irving Rapper's Rhapsody in Blue is a heavily fictionalised biopic of the great composer George Gershwin, played here by Robert Alder. Beginning with his childhood as a gifted pianist, to his youth as a struggling songwriter, to his great successes in musical theatre and orchestral compositions, and his untimely death. Featured along the way are his parents, played by Maris Karnofsky and Rosemary DeCamp, his brother and lyricist Ira, Herbert Rudley, Joan Leslie and Alex Alexis Smith play fictional love interests Julie and Christine, and head and shoulders above the rest is Oscar Levant, Gershwin's friend and contemporary, playing himself. A few people play themselves in the movie, including Al, jo Al Jolson and conductor Paul Whiteman, but Levant is the only one with a major role, and you can see why, because he steals every scene he's in. Being well known for his quick-witted one-liners, I would not be surprised if a fair amount of his dialogue was ad-libbed, since his lines are substantially better than the script in general. However, when it comes to Gershwin, first and foremost, it has to be about the music. And they well and truly nail that. From start to finish, the score, songs, production numbers are all absolutely perfect. Robert Alder does fine with his fictional version of, Ger of Gershwin. Joan Leslie is lovely and charming as always. Maurice Karnofsky is very warm and likeable as George and Ira's father. In fact, the whole cast can't really be faulted. And as I mentioned, Oscar Levant is a lot of fun and the main reason to watch this movie beyond the music. Director Irving Rapper brilliantly showcases the work of George Gershwin with some perfect musical sequences, particularly the centerpiece of the film, the unforgettable rendition of Rhapsody in Blue, which is why he gets my nod for Best Director of 1945. And finally, Leave Her to Heaven, directed by John M. John M. Stahl, stars Jean Tierney as Ellen, who meets writer Richard Harland, Cornell Wilde, on a train. There is an immediate attraction, and it turns out they are both heading to the same place, with Ellen's mother and cousin slash adopted sister Ruth, played by Jean Crane, and mutual friend Glenn, Ray Collins. Ellen and Richard marry soon after, and after picking up Richard's disabled brother Danny, played by Daryl Hickman, they head to Back of the Moon, Richard's lakeside cabin. As time goes by, Ellen becomes more and more sinister, desperately trying to keep Richard all to herself, antagonising her own family and anyone else she deems in the way, even going so far as to let Danny drown and cause her own miscarriage after becoming pregnant in an attempt to make Richard happy again. But as Ellen ferociously clings to Richard, he finds himself drawn to Ruth, just as friends, but there is definitely more under the surface for both of them, prompting Ellen to take even more drastic action. This is by far Jean Tierney's best work. She was renowned for being incredibly beautiful, but as Ellen, she shows what she can really do. From very, very early on in the film, you can see something is off with her. She is strangely obsessed with her dead father. She falls into a silent, cold stare sometimes. She is fiercely competitive all the time. And when no one is looking, she will do anything to get what she wants. Then when she wants to be loved, she is sweet as can be. Jean Tierney is the main drawer of the movie. But like her, the whole thing is simply gorgeous to look at. Filmed in beautiful Technicolor by Leon Shamroy. Fun fact, this is the first colour film I have included in these videos. Everything looks idyllic, yet the story is straight up noir, creating an unsettling disharmony which mirrors the character of Ellen, the beautiful darkness. 
John M. Stiles' direction and the script by Joe Swirling, based on Ben Ames Williams' novel, combined to create some incredibly memorable scenes, particularly Ellen's carefully orchestrated tumble down the stairs and Danny's drowning, calling out to the ice-cold Ellen. Leave Her to Heaven is my choice for Best Picture of 1945, and Jean Tierney wins Best Actress as Ellen. Ellen always wins. Join me next time on A Century of Cinema, when I will be discussing my favourite films of 1946. Now, go watch a movie.